Uh, so, as far as the ranking of my episodes, we'll start with number five. I have Therapy Patrol. Um, <laughs> it was uh, pretty fitting. Uh, we had the rat, uh, Mr. Admiral Whiskers. I really like the storytelling in that episode, the sort of non-linear um, storytelling there and how we all, we got to delve into each character, a little bit of a better backstory, um, a little bit of what they're going through that day, just sort of the personal struggles they're going through, and then we got to see um, sort of how they're, you know, all the problems they've been facing throughout their whole lives and throughout this whole season um, were coming to a head, and they were getting, able to talk it out a little bit, um, and it sort of created the setup for the next few episodes with all their divisions, with Jane going on, um, so I really love that episode. Uh, Danny Patrols, number four. Obviously, one of the highlights of the season was just Danny in general, um, <laughs> just being on Danny the Street, and, uh, you know, the, um, I wish Morally Corrupt was back in this episode, in the season, um, but, you know, just meeting a drag queen, um, I, uh, apologies if uh, if she's a trans woman, um, not a drag queen, but I, I'm assuming she was a drag or he was a drag queen. Um, but you know that was just a highlight. Uh, getting Larry to finally accept himself, um, Cyborg kind of along for the ride, and then on the flip side, <laughs> we had the most heterosexual interactions uh, with Jane and Doug and Rita was there. Um, again, setting up this. Um, <laughs> wow, really, uh, setting up the number three pick for me, Jane Patrol. Um, Jane Patrol was great. It was probably one of the first times I legitimately was uh, tearing up and feeling very strong emotions for the show. Um, just seeing the, the sort of torment and self... It was very... It hit home for a lot of... Um, you know, hit those sort of depressive kind of um, notes. Um, you know, I, I'm sure everyone can kind of resonate to an extent with um, sort of fighting oneself and, um, you know, the struggles of accepting oneself and all their faults, all their, um, can't think of words right now, um, but, <laughs> you know, the, just sort of the inner struggle uh, of, of a person. And I, I really love that episode for, um, showing that you can overcome them um you know she she did it by herself too um you know it wasn't uh another altar that came in to save her it wasn't even cliff cliff was just there to support her but it was jane in the end who overcame her own traumas and overcame her own demons um so i really appreciate that episode um number two i have penultimate patrol um kind of for the same reasons it hit a lot of um uh strong chords throughout the whole episode uh, I'm mixing them together, but I know uh, the cyborg part um, when Vic finally was told the truth about the accident um, that really hit home for me the the sort of um, you know the choice between Silas uh, Silas's choice between saving his son and saving his wife um, we had the the awesome moment in the white space um, we had flex <laughs> we're not even gonna talk about that part um but we had the awesome moment in the white space where rita was able to um sort of uh you know narrate her own story apologies um narrate her own story and overcome you know the, the dilemma they were in and sort of it just really showed agency on her part but yeah penultimate patrol uh number two for sure um and then the ending where we were stuck in a time loop and we learned the secret of Niles that he was partially responsible for all of their accidents, part of, partially uh, for controlling their lives. Um, some honorable mentions that just didn't quite make the list. Um, again, I said I had seven on my list, so uh, there was some some uh, not top five material. But uh, Paw Patrol, <laughs> mainly just because it was wacky, crazy, um, and had a pug. <laughs> um, but no, it was it was pretty much. Um, one of the first episodes where we kind of see just how insane we can get time travel um the way that mr nobody breaks the fourth wall and between dimensions and um you know we uh, this <laughs> uh this old uh, i think her name was marianne this old lady uh <laughs> sacrifices herself to go save the jane and cliff and then they ring the bell and then the, another eye appears in the sky it was just like insanely 
Um, again, it was one of the first episodes where we just kind of see just how weird the show can get and what, what kind of stories they can tell with this show. Um, and then another uh, honorable mention is Puppet Patrol. Again, kind of showing the weirdness um, and just kind of the fun, the, showing Jane and all of her uh, alters, not all of her alters, but you know some of, some of her alters and some of their powers. Um, a really strong message about control and how it's a weapon for fascists. Um, I mean, that was Jane's takeaway, but you know, just how um, you know Larry trying to control his uh, the naked spirit, Rita trying to control her powers, um, Victor trying to control uh, the team and um, Grid. Um, you know, it was a very strong theme throughout the whole episode, and it was also like. <laughs> very cathartic like yeah let's kill some nazis today <laughs> you know um so yeah those are my two honorable mentions for the season number one is francis patrol damn that's a really good episode um from cliff and clara we never got clara closure i wonder if we're gonna there's a season two see they, they set up like little seeds for season two um but they didn't really set up any like big like cliffhangers like titans did um, but Francis Patrol, you know, Cliff and Clara, um, setting up that dynamic, him, uh, kind of finding a bit of closure with her, um, very emotional there. And then Larry and John, obviously, another closure, um, he was able to say goodbye to John and sort of, uh, move on, move forward. Um, very powerful scenes in that episode. Um, but yeah, great season, I guess, 